welcome. Today we have Patrick, who is a personal trainer, and uh, we're going to ask him some questions about uh, the personal training field and why he chose that uh, particular career. So, Patrick, welcome to our video with uh, besttradeschools.net. And I guess our first question today is what inspired you to start a school focused on training personal trainers? Sure, Doug, appreciate that. So basically, uh, 25 years ago, I saw the demand and the need. A lot of other uh, trades, so to, so to say, such as massage therapy, cosmetology, esthetician, highly regulated. There's a massage board, a cosmetology board. Uh, but the personal training industry is an actual career with high income potential, yet it's still a business with huge you know, liability. You're telling somebody how to eat, sleep, uh, what to put in their body, nutrition consultation is huge, but there's no regulatory entity out there. So uh, as you are well aware, there's probably 400 internet online certifications uh, in the marketplace, but there's no school like our trade school for personal training that gives you the anatomy, physiology, the nutrition, the business management, as well as the most important part is the lab. So we classify it as a lab, but it is a practical, which we apply the live classroom material in a real working gym every day. So my students, after four and a half months, have the practical knowledge. They've seen proper form technique. They've worked out in a facility. They could adjust the equipment and they could circumvent uh, prior injuries with their clients to earn as much as possible. So uh, that's what really uh, caused us to, to do some due diligence research. Uh, you could go to university and receive an exercise science degree in uh, kinesiology, but there's no school like our school that teaches you the actual trait of personal training. Nice. Great idea. So, so what are the key qualities and skills that make a successful personal trainer? So there's education and certification. Education is the key. As a, a professional, as a personal trainer, you must be able to uh, take a client, uh, with different needs, different prior injuries, uh, different uh, goals, and be able to assess them and guarantee the goals after training them over the course of your sessions. That's the key to it. Uh, motivation, you have to be passionate for health and wellness, and actually look at your career as an extension of the medical industry because you are providing uh, knowledge and expertise in that field. So it's, you know, it's a great viable field if you put the time and effort in and go to those school. Perfect. So how does your program ensure that students are prepared to meet industry standards, which obviously are not very uh, well established? And, you know, if there are certification exams, how do they pass? How can you prepare them to pass? Absolutely. So our students are well versed at graduation. They can sit for any one of the multiple certification programs in a marketplace. Some are more renowned than others. Some are, uh, you know, $199 and some are $1,900. So we give our students the college-based core curriculum, the hands-on practical knowledge. We give them CPR, first aid prior to graduating, liability insurance. So, and we do role-playing, interviewing, and, uh, you know, a big component of our program is the actual job assistance in the marketplace. So we, uh, you know, we work with a lot of the small mom and pop studios as well as the big box Equinox in Miami and New York for job opportunities. For, oh, wow. Uh, nice. So uh, what are the common challenges that students face during their training and how does your school help to overcome these challenges? Sure, so probably the most, the, the toughest challenge is time, right? Commitment. Four and a half months, we're 600 clock hours. We are a Monday through Friday live program, uh, nine in the morning till 4 p.m. Uh, the commitment's tough, but a lot of our students and most of our students understand the need for it. Uh, you know, we're not going to get everybody because some people will still go to uh, cost effective, quick, fast, easy. But at the end of the day, if you commit to the industry, look at it as a business, the return on that educational expense is going to pay multiple times over at graduation if you're passionate about the health and wellness industry and you want to be a trainer awesome so you've had a lot of students go through your program can you share some success stories of your graduates absolutely so orlando as you know we have two locations orlando tampa orlando uh, everybody wants to go to school in orlando uh, florida is very popular for 
Northeasterners, New York, New Jersey, even the Midwest to come here for four and a half months, go to school and then go back home uh, and train. Uh, so for us, we uh, we just love helping other people from out of state. We have a residential program, some housing assistance where they could come uh, and stay uh, here in Orlando. Okay. And so do you see any trends? I mean, I, I could give you success. Okay, sure. I, I'm yeah. kind of leery about giving names and stuff as far as. No, no, you don't have to give names. Just give us an idea yeah, of a yeah. couple of students. So, or... you know, we do have a popular veteran who graduated about four or five years ago. He opened up a huge uh, facility, uh, Pack Animal Fitness in Tampa. We have some other students that have opened up uh, Pump and Run here in Winter Park uh, from small mom and pop studios at a thousand square foot to 10,000 square foot. It just depends on fiscal needs. We always tell people, Hey, start slow, start working at a facility, learn the business, build up some clientele before you move out. But, uh, a lot of our graduates will do a multiple of working for a fitness center, such as crunch fitness, uh, lifetime family fitness, and then they'll go out and work weekends, boot camps, and things on a side for supplemental income. So it's, you know, the industry is wide open for multiple uh, revenue streams. Nice. And so a lot of changes in the world. Do you see what's, what's emerging in the fitness industry? And you know, how does your curriculum change throughout time as these changes come forward? Particularly, yes. I guess, with diet and things that come out. Absolutely. So, you know, we try to stay on uh, the industry trends, you know, of course, technology, technology is, is huge. Uh, you know, during COVID, everybody went to an online in-home training platform that's coming back and where people are wanting that hands-on interaction, that personal interaction, going back into the gym. Uh, we stay, uh, abreast of, uh, what's wanted a lot of virtual training, uh, giving our graduates the technology that's needed to best suit virtual training platform. Uh, elderly fitness, women's fitness is huge. Youth fitness training is, is, is an untapped market right now. We're seeing that for sports related. You know, mom and dads will pay anything for their kids to play on the baseball team, be a better volleyball player, uh, upper body conditioning for the golfer here is popular in Florida. So we're constantly changing our textbooks, our nutrition books, uh, and upgrading as needed for, for industry standards. That's amazing. So, and I guess along that uh, same kind of vein, you have to stay current with what's changing for, so, so how does uh, continuing education for personal trainers, is, is there any kind of format? And then the resources, do you offer those kind of resources if there's additional training or is there sure. something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, you know, you're gonna find, as a graduate of MPTI, you're going to eventually, once you get out there, find your niche market. I would say, you know, if you played high school, college football, you may focus on the football community. A golf player may focus on the golf community. So, you know, once you find your niche, uh, there is a lot of continuing education. We do focus on continuing education. We have multiple platforms for that. They're typically an eight-hour program on a Saturday or Sunday. Uh, you know, when kettlebells were extremely popular, we offered a kettlebell CEU, suspension, strap training uh, right now. Speed blast agility training for for youth is is extremely popular. Mm -hmm. uh, Orlando soccer is popular. We do a soccer blast training eight hours on a Saturday, so we're always kind of uh, changing our continuing education options up, making them affordable uh, for anybody that's in the industry, any fitness professional, as well as mom and pops. You don't have to be a personal trainer to take one of our CEUs. Oh, nice. And so, what kind of advice would you give to someone who's thinking about a career as a personal trainer? Sure. You know, due, due diligence, it is a business, it's a viable business. There is a lot of money to be made. Uh, if you commit, you do it properly, you educate yourself, get the proper insurance, the CPR first aid, and really learn the business, so to say. There's a lot of money. Uh, uh, <laughs> the older clientele will definitely spend money if you show them that you're qualified, you're educated, you're knowledgeable, you could help them. Uh, you know, whether it's kick swimming or walking on the beach, bicycling, it's more than just inside of an actual gym. Uh, our high school students are probably our number one viable uh, candidate as an alternative going to college. Because what we're seeing right now is a lot of high school students really don't, they're not 100% sure what they want to do. Uh, so out of high school, they could come to me for the summer, four and a half months. Uh, you know, tuition is priced right. If they decide to further education and go to university for a two or four year degree, uh, they will receive credit clock hours for our program. 
But the best part uh, for mom and dads is that it'll keep them out of working retail, hospitality, restaurants, bartenders, staying up two, three in the morning. They could train part time and earn a good living while they're going to university. And if they pick an applied science, something like exercise science, kinesiology, it just furthers their education and their career choice. Awesome. So how do you ensure that your students not only gain the technical skills, but how to build and manage their own client base? Sure. So the technical skills are basically here. 218 hours of hands-on practical. That's two and a half hours a day during a, a real live working fitness center. Uh, the college core gives them all the technical anatomy, physiology, the program design, the rehab. And then we do a great job prior to graduating on role playing interview process. We do bring in recruiters from all the big national gyms and small mom and pop facilities. They'll come in, they'll talk to our graduating classes. They'll let them know expectations, what they expect at this facility, their club, uh, whether it's a big box gym, a corporate gym, I give them a little heads up prior to them coming and then even interview on site with us, which is a huge benefit. So if somebody knows they want to work for Crunch and they live nearby, it's within their 15 mile radius, they can interview right there on site. Wow. So I already know that you are not the average uh, training school. But did you want to give yourself a, a plug on what differentiates you from other fitness programs, fitness training programs that are out there? I mean, obviously, you've, you've given us a multitude of reasons why your school is superior. But is there anything else that you would like to add to differentiate yourself? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, I have kids myself and I believe uh, education is the key. But uh, you have to, when you choose education and you decide education, you must make sure that, you know, that that's licensed by the Department of Education, that it is a viable accredited educational facility. So you will receive clock hour credits if you decide to further your education uh, and then really enjoy the trade that you pick, uh, whether it's airline travel training, personal training. You have to really be passionate about it and want to uh, show up every day, because if, if you know, if it's grueling to get out of bed in the morning and go to school, it's probably not the right field choice for you. But, you know, we've been doing it a long time. We're veteran owned operated. We pride ourselves on that. Uh, I take good care of my veterans as well as uh, all of our other students. We do offer financial aid that separates us from the majority of schools out there. Uh, I would say. Yeah, and we also offer M1 study visas for international students. So we pretty much have everything. Uh, for, for anyone, so to say, that's looking for a career in the personal training industry. Well, that's fabulous. I think you've got a great uh, thing going on. I think that it is a really good viable, speaking of myself, using personal trainers for the last 20 years of my life, just trying to stay physically uh, strong, um, that you are, have got a really good niche, I think, and it sounds like you're uh, crushing it on your end. And I just want to thank you for the time to talk to me and our viewers on, uh, you know, what it's going to take to be a personal trainer and what we've been speaking with Patrick Sherman today, the National Personal Training Institute out of Orlando, Tampa, Florida. And Patrick, I just can't thank you enough for the insights that you've given us. And I think that our viewers are going to really uh, have to consider uh, personal training. It's something that's not really out there on the on the tip of the tongue for this type of, uh, when you say trade school, you're not thinking about that. But And, and I know the money's out there because I know what personal trainers charge and, and it's, it's worth it. You know, it's, it's worth it to us. And I know how difficult um, the, the time and the energy that they have to spend to, to train you know, clients all day long. <laughs> So, sure. well, I, again, thank you very much for your time. And uh, this concludes our interview. And anything else you want to say, just a recap? No, I just want to uh, recap. I appreciate Best Trade Schools. Uh, you guys are serving the community well. Uh, it's a well-needed, uh, you know, educate college, traditional college is not for everybody. Trade schools are the way to go heading in uh, the next 15, 20 years. Uh, I totally believe it. My heart's in it. And we're going to continue to do what we do. And we appreciate your time today, Doug. Thanks for the interview. Yeah. Oh, he sounds like you're doing a great job and we appreciate your time as well. So have the great rest of your week and uh, we look for this video out on our site in the next few days. Perfect, Doug. Have a great one. Thanks, sir. All right. Take care. Nice Thank you. you. Bye -bye. Nice meeting you.